Nigeria is the giant of Africa and has a rapidly growing youthful population. They are about 40 million people within the ages of 14 to 25, representing about 15% of the share of young people in Africa. 45% of the entire Nigerian population are below 15 and it is estimated that this population would be home to about 28% of the world's poor by 2050. If this youth bulge is seen as capital, right, it has the opportunity to kickstart or jumpstart Africa's, you know, economic narrative. If we are saying we want our students to be employable, how do we integrate that into the curriculum? In Africa, we are in a we're in a very interesting time. We're in a very interesting time in our history, and it's interesting because in every country on the continent, we have more than 20 to 30 percent of young people constituting uh, part of the entire population. And if if this youth bulge is is harnessed effectively, or if this youth bulge is seen as capital, right, it has the opportunity to kickstart or jumpstart Africa's, you know, economic narrative. However, the big question is, what happens if large numbers of young people in the poorest countries are denied opportunities to build better lives? Young people across Africa are unable to transition into the next phase of their lives. And so they are just, they are trapped in a phase of their life. And what that means is that Young people cannot transition into higher levels of education. Young people, even after going through the four walls of university, they cannot find decent jobs. Many of them also cannot, you know, transition even into starting their own businesses. Many young people don't have information on how to live healthy. And there are structural limitations that even allow them to exercise their citizenship. Only one in four secondary school graduates has the opportunity to transition into the university. And the, the undercurrent of this is that it, the education system, one, does not provide uh, quality learning outcomes, which makes them unprepared for the next phase. Secondly, there are issues around teenage pregnancy. And thirdly, we have issues of poverty. So poverty, because of poverty, many young people will not be able to transition into, um, into the university. I think the people who had crafted the 6334 system had had the idea that people, you know, transitioning from junior secondary, you know, uh, to other levels could either go to senior secondary school or find, you know, um, employment. But that doesn't seem to have been very successful because I think, you know, at junior secondary level, people don't tend to have learned the core skills that they need for the world of work. Uh, and so if they drop out at that stage, then people tend to end up becoming like uh, unskilled labor. At senior secondary level, I think that's a key stage because if people don't end up in higher education, then, you know, like they, they go into the world and find a way for themselves. The challenge is we don't understand the market enough. So we don't know how to uh, determine what areas students should study because, you know, the markets were not clear about what sectors offer opportunities or, or what sectors don't. Some organizations now are looking at first understanding the market as the basis to then invest in skill development. Leap Africa has introduced the iLEAD Fellowship Program to enable effective transitioning of youth by building their capacity and providing opportunities for them to gain critical 21st century skill and work readiness skill. I've had the privilege of working on the ILEAD program for about two years now and I must say that it's a program that is so dear to my heart. The ILEAD program is creating opportunities for young people to find themselves and in finding themselves we have to make a difference in their own lives, in their family and their communities. Um, every year we identify 15 core members who are passionate about development and we train them on our um, employability models, on our leadership models and our, our entrepreneurship models. And during this training process, we 
sort of provide some support tools and also um, inspire them to serve as facilitators and um, models to um, the students across um, various communities in Accra Ibom State. And presently, we work with about 450 students, and um, these students go through a journey of transformation where they are trained on our models and they go on to do amazing stuff even within the, within the academic um, calendar. There's one phase of the program called the Change Project Implementation Phase. During this um, phase of the program, we inspire beneficiaries to champion social initiatives in their communities. We, through our interactions with young people, realized that some of them believe that they are limited in options post-secondary school. And so through our Pathways Day, for example, and throughout the term, we introduce them to different options that are available to them. The last phase is the internship phase of the program. So during the internship program, we sort of attach our core members with um, some organizations in Aquaibom. So they go through a two-week internship program and during this internship they learn some critical work skills that can help them um, navigate through um, their career post NYC. And also um, the students also go through a two weeks internship program. So during this internship program they work with top organizations in Aquaibom and they gain relevant um, work readiness skills that can help them in their future career. With the youth population of Nigeria making over 60% of its total population, the need to enable the successful transition of the Nigerian youth cannot be overemphasized. We welcome the private sector, public sector, and all our social sector players to come together. Let's create an enabling environment for our Nigerian youth to transition and live an ultimately fulfilling life. Come on board.